Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Stand Together. Good morning. Jump on if you're watching this live. Jump on and say good morning. If you're watching a replay, give me hashtag replay. And thank you so much for all of you that have been sharing this onto your own socials and that have been um, that have been tagging friends in, that have been watching this on the replay. It's been so cool to see. Jump on, say good morning. Welcome to another Stand Together awesome business lesson coming up today and a really critical thing that um, that I think it's a perfect timing to be doing as well in your businesses. Jump on. Give me good morning in the comments so I can see who's jumping on. Pete, good to see you. Sarah, good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So many of you. Mel, Jules, good to see you. Mel, good to see you. Jump on. If your tag, your, your handle is not your name, make sure you say hi and let me know your name so I can actually say hi to you not to your random handle that you got because you couldn't get your, your name because you were too late to Instagram. <laughs> Jump on, give me good morning. Uh, hey, 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 good to see you, good to see you. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. So many of you jumping on. Hey, welcome to another Stand Together. Jump on and give me a good morning and welcome to this time we get to hang out. Hang out and be together and stand together. This is about being together it's about hanging out together, and most importantly, you know this is you know this is about making sure that we are standing together and 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 being here and focusing on the things that we can control and implementing things that work right now. What I'm sharing with you guys are a bunch of things that work. Uh, these are the things that I do that I've been doing right across my businesses, and I have not been slowing down. Seventeen business meetings yesterday, board meetings and appointments, acquisition meetings, big stuff, small stuff, micro investments. Major investments, this is the time. This is the time, including great getting market share. This is the time. All right, jump on. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good to see a bunch of you jumping on. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Stand Together. And I hope you've been taking a huge amount from this and getting a, a lot out of this as we've been hanging out together. Now, listen, today what I want to share with you is that there's one thing that I, I, I've noticed. Uh, it actually, it's come up a couple of times in the last couple of weeks, actually, when I've been, I've been uh, talking to some of my students uh, directly in some of our programs, and and even just looking at some of some of um, some of our businesses that um, that we've taken the same principle to. One of the things uh, is a really important thing to think about right now, and today I want to talk about your your sales process, right? And when we talk about sales process, one of the things that I find that happens in a lot of small and medium sized businesses, right, is that that we we get disjointed in in our, our process that we've created to be able to make revenue in the business. So let me give you let me give you the, the totality of what I'm talking about here, right? So if your business is an offline business, it means you need to be able to speak to somebody and sell your product or your service. If it's an online business, you're obviously pushing people more to purchase your products online. But regardless of what you're doing, there's always going to be a, a process that needs to needs to happen in order to get that person to take that buying action. That buying action could be buy online or it could be to uh, opt into a, a web form to have a conversation with you, um, or it could be to um, it could be to buy a smaller product to lead into a bigger product. One of the things I, I think is a really important uh, a thing to do, I think really like a really important thing to do in your business, and this might be a great time for you whether you are exploding right now and having a huge growth opportunity in your in your company, uh, or you're in the opposite. You're kind of trying to in survival mode right now because your business has been affected by. COVID. This is a great chance to stop. Look right now at your entire sales process and look at it end to end and 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 start to see where the where the efficiencies have are uh, where things are going really well and then where where you're kind of losing pressure. You know, where are the things, where's the leakage uh, in the in in the pipe or in the in the process? So what I mean by that is so I I I obviously have a ton of companies, but I also get involved a lot in marketing because I have a few marketing businesses as well, and I get to see how people are marketing their businesses and how they're generating leads, what they're doing with those leads, and the whole process of what they're doing. So what, what I what I always notice is that people generally they go they go kind of ass about face with this process of of engineering their their sales. What I mean by that is they say, okay, 
I want to do Facebook marketing. And they go, all right, I'm going to go start doing some Facebook marketing. They say, okay, I want to go and do um, Google ads. I'm going to go do some Google AdWords. But what they don't do is start from the very beginning and say, what is, the, what is my outcome? What's the deliverable that I want? So let me give you some examples, right? And you can throw some examples if you want them down the bottom of your businesses and, and, and what you sell and how you sell it. And I'll give you some examples real time too. But let's say you sell something online. If you're selling something online, then you're, you, you're going to have to have, you have to think about your, your sales process in multiple ways. If it's selling a product online, which is not a massively expensive product, which means it's a fairly easy purchase. I mean, if you're trying to sell a, um, a $3,000 computer and you're not Apple and they don't know who you are, there's going to be a really challenging sales process involved in that. Whereas most of us that like and use Apple would feel very comfortable with with jumping online and going to the Apple store and buying an Apple computer and having it delivered. So we were happy to spend a couple of thousand dollars on our on our cards online with Apple because it's a multi-billion dollar brand. In fact, it's almost a trillion dollar brand now that, that we trust, right? So what that means is that we're 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 really comfortable with that brand and what it does. Now, if you don't have that same brand recognition for what you do, then you've got to reverse engineer the process. So if you're selling something online, you've got to ask yourself the question, okay, if I'm selling something online, what do I need to do? First, and follow me here, your website needs to actually be good at what it does. It needs to be able to convert. It needs to have the right copy, the right photos. There's no point in driving a hell of a lot of traffic to your website and having a shitty website that takes ages to load, that is crappy navigation. You've got to have either your web page or you've got to have a landing page, which is what what, what you would call a page that you would go to, um, that you're marketing to, or a specific page that someone can go to about whatever that offer may be. So you've got to look at that. That's the first thing you need to look at before you go out there and you say, I want to go out there and market. You've got to, you've got to reverse engineer the process. Where are they looking? Where are they looking to buy from you, right? So if you're trying to sell something online. Now, in the, in the opposite side, if you're trying to get someone to uh, to have a conversation with you, right? So let's say you sell a product which is higher end product, or it's a it's a multiple contact product, or it's a quoting product. Uh, then you need to drive people to be able to have a conversation with you to to um, to see whether um, you're the right fit for them, whether it's um, whether uh, they can afford it, whether it's the right demographic. So wherever they're going to, right, whether they're opting in on, whether it be a page on a social media page on Facebook, uh, a lead form on there, or whether it be a website. You've got to make sure that that's that's ready to be able to take on the the leads that are coming to it. Because if that process is crappy, it's not going to work. Now think about it. if you're selling something online, pretty simple, right? They come on, they buy. But then what happens next, right? Because we're not talking about the marketing side yet. If they buy something on your website, what happens next? Do they get offered a secondary product? Do they get said, hey, people also buy these products. Do they get opted into a database? Do they, do they go into a, a, a weekly or a daily newsletter of other offers of things that are happening? What do you do once they've purchased something from you? Or if they've opted in to have a conversation with you, because let's say you sell a service that you need to have a conversation with somebody about, like let's say that they want to um, get some personal training sessions from you and your personal trainer, and you want to get them to opt in to have a conversation about their fitness goals. Okay, once they opt in and then then what happens? Do you use Calendly so that they can they can book an appointment to speak to you straight away about your PT sessions? Do you uh, do you um, uh, get the lead and then you call them up? Like what do you do once you get that lead? What's the process? And let's say it's three days before you would speak to them. What happens in between that time? Are they getting are they getting emails? Are they getting um, are they are they getting some kind of preframe? Do they know who you are and what you do? Do they know? Uh, have they, are they seeing testimonials? Are they seeing? Are they seeing things that make them excited to want to have a conversation with you? Are you are you doing things to help what we call your show ratio, which is how many people actually show up for the appointment that you set for them, right? So it's not just about getting a lead. What are you doing to nurture those once you've already sold something, or once they've already opted in to have a conversation? Now, have you noticed so far? We're talking about sales and the whole process, but I'm starting at the end. 
I'm not starting at the start. I'm not saying, let's go get leads on Instagram. Let's go do some content and put it on social media and and cross our fingers and hope that shit's going to work out. You've got to start at the end, right? You've got to look at your website. You've got to look at your either your conversion page for a lead. You've got to look at your uh, your website to look, are they, are they, if they don't buy anything. So let's say, for example, simple things. When they're jumping on, are you capturing details when they when they put their when they add to cart? Are you capturing details along the way so that if they abandon their cart, you're actually emailing them to say, "Hey, Aaron, you forgot about your socks and your pants and your jumper. Do you want to go back and and finish that purchase, or do you not have that system in place? Which you can have in place, and it's a smart system because a huge amount more people abandon cart than they do buy from you, right? So if you're selling something online, more people will come to your website and abandon cart, which means they add things to your cart, then what they're going to do, then buy from you. So what are you doing to keep those people? Listen, is it easy to get somebody who's already added things to cart to go back and buy those things than it is to sell somebody something new? Absolutely. That person has already shown a vested interest. They've already gone and added things into a cart. So you've got to think about if you're selling online what am I doing to get a sale? But then what am I doing to make sure that the people that, that come and leave, the people that, that, that come and, and add to cart, the people that are buying, what's the next step for them to be able to come back? What are you doing? What's the, what are you doing to be able to maximize that? And if you do generate leads online to speak to somebody, how long is it taking for you to speak to that person? Right? What are you doing when it comes to generating leads online? I mean, I'll give you one of my rules of thumb here and there's so many people that don't follow this process and they waste so much money, right? When you generate a lead online, when you have a lead that comes in, you've got to, you've got to follow the 3-6 rule, right? I call it the 3-6 rule, which means you've got three days, right? Three business days, three business days, right? To really get in contact with that person before they forget you even existed and they opted into your website at all. And in those three days, you've got to call them six times, six times. People might say that's a hell of a lot. Trust me, it's enough. Six times, because after that third day, if they don't, if they haven't, uh, if they haven't um, heard from you, if you're not called them, I know people that are generating leads and waiting a week to speak to them. I'm like, for fuck's sake, do you like to waste money? Just go and burn some notes. Do you know what I mean? Just go do that. Go fucking burn a pile of money. Go burn a credit card. It's stupid. If you're going to get leads, you have to follow the system. You have to follow the process. You've got to call those people because understand something. The difference between when you've got a small business and you start to, and you have leads coming to you, right? So if I've got a small boutique uh, and I sell whatever the fuck, kids toys, right? And because I'm surrounded by them here, right? If I'm selling kids toys, right? School, right? School, homeschool. If I'm selling kids toys, then I know if people come in to buy those kids toys, then I know that, that, that they're coming in, I'm getting that local traffic. They're a really good traffic. They walk in, they want to buy something, right? But if... If I start to generate online leads for my toy store in my local area, the leads are going to be very different quality leads because I am forcing people to give me their name and number and have a conversation with me. Think about it. People are scrolling through their feed like you were before you saw this. If you're watching this on the replay and you go, oh, what's Aaron on about today? Let me click this. You're not necessarily looking for me. If you were, you would have gone to my social page, then clicked on uh, then clicked on the video. But if this has come up in your feed, you're going, okay, this is interesting. You might have been doing something else, scrolling for something else. So you're going to capture somebody's attention and they weren't necessarily looking for the toy store, which means the lead quality is going to be less. There's nothing you can do about that. It's going to be less. But the reason why we do online lead generation is because we want a higher volume of leads, right? If you have a brick brick and mortar store, if you have a business that people call or they email, I guarantee you they're not calling and emailing you a hundred times a day, right? They might be calling and emailing you two times a day, one time a day, five times a day. But the reason why you want to go online and generate leads is because you'll generate 100 leads a day, 200 leads a day. And even if only 5% of your leads are converting, if you can convert 5% of the leads that you're generating online, right, and you can generate 100, 200 leads a day, you can have a really substantial business on or offline, whether it be a product or a service. But you've got to think about it from the end. You've got to reverse engineer it. Now, the reason I say this is because some of you might be in a bit of a poor situation right now because of COVID has slowed you down or shut you down. 
If that's the case, this is the time you should be spending even more than ever before finessing your sales process, looking at the process, looking at where the, where the lead is coming in from, looking at the way it's being pre-framed before you speak to them or how it's, what's the online process looking like? What's the process they're following? Now I say this because one of the reasons why this is coming up is that I've spent the last uh, last couple of weeks, I've had some conversations with people that um, that are involved in um, some of my, my online marketing businesses, my lead generation businesses around, around digital marketing. And what I'm always blown away with was the amount of people that generate leads and wait a week, two weeks, maybe three weeks, or maybe get the lead, right? And then call it that day, but go, oh, they'll call me back. They'll call me back. And they don't call them back. And then three weeks goes by and they wonder why no one's speaking to them. Right, that's how you deal with leads. How you deal with leads online, you need to hustle, 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 hustle. Three, six, three, six, three, six, that's it. And everyone needs to follow the process. And you need to have a process. What's a script? Have you just got some receptionist picking up the phone going, oh, um, oh, hi, yeah, um, you asked about uh, buying a rocking horse from us or a jigsaw bar. Do, do you want it? Or are they trained? Hi, Betty here, right? How are you going? I got, I, I got the information for me. Great, let's have a conversation. What made you want to find out more about our toy store today? What made you want to find out about more about our myotherapy today? What made you want to find out more about our PT? Whatever the fuck you sell, you've got to have a process to what's, what's the process, right? How much money are you losing by not having the process? Do you know how to sell? Do you have a sales process? Do you have a sales training process, right? Right, what's the process you're following to get people to 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 be able to buy from you. You can't just generate leads online or have leads that come directly into you through by phone or email and then just just wing it. Winging it, you can't fucking scale a business on winging it. And unless you, the business owner, wants to make every sale to the day you die, you can't follow that process. You have to follow a process that's scalable that somebody else can replicate and follow. And if you have all the genius in your head, if you have all the passion in your heart and not everyone else can replicate that because they're a $17 an hour receptionist that really doesn't give as much shit as what you do, you need to get the process right. And you need to teach your team how much it actually costs for you to be able to generate generate leads. The amount of time I speak to people, like I've got leads that generates in my business. I've got leads that I generate in my business for three, four, five cents cents a lead. And I've got some leads that I generate in my business that cost two, three hundred dollars a lead. That's a really expensive lead. That's a really expensive lead. So if you're converting at, let's say 25%, it's costing me $800 to convert that lead into a sale. Now, if that sale is for something worth $10,000, all right. If that sale is for something worth $1,000, we have a problem. It's costing me $800 to generate a $1,000 sale. We have a problem. So you've got to look at your numbers. So you've, you've got to not only understand your website and your flow, you've also got to look at your numbers. What are your conversion ratios? What do you like at closing a lead online versus closing a lead that walks into your store or makes a phone call to your business or opts into your website? It's a very different quality lead, right? It's a very different quality lead. So you've got to work out what kind of lead you have coming in, where they're coming from, and what are your conversion? That's a trick. That's a trick right there. What type of lead is coming from where and how do you convert that? Because I guarantee you, you'll convert your online leads less than what you'll convert leads that just come in from your website or email you or call you because they're generally organic leads that are coming to you. You'll convert higher. I know from years of me being in business that you'll convert generally more of a Google lead than you will from a Facebook lead. But a Google lead could cost you 10, 15 times more. But it's a specific lead because they're typing in plumber Melbourne, right? Versus scrolling and seeing, oh, there's a plumber in Melbourne. I do need to get that fixed. Maybe I'll just have a chat to that person. There's a difference in the quality lead. But you have to have both. If you don't have online lead generation right now in your business, you are an archaic business that is literally waiting to fall into the life support and the death zone, which you heard me talk about in a couple of a couple of stand-togethers before. So have you noticed we're talking all about the end process here? 
then we're going backwards. Like think about it. If you generate a lead to speak to somebody, who's speaking to them? Are they trained? Do they know what to say? Is there a process? Is there a script? Do you have vision? Can you see what's actually happening? Can you see what's happening with that lead when that comes in? What's the process of that? Can you see what's happening with that lead? Can you see if they've just, oh, I've called them, but they said, oh, they weren't really interested. And you're like, okay, well, I spent 30 bucks on that lead. So give me a little bit more than not really interested. Tell me some more on that, right? So you've got to look at the leads and see whatever your business is, where the lead's coming from, what type of lead you're trying to maximize and what's going to be the goal of that lead. And it's got to work for your business. It has to work for your business, right? So I want you to put some of your businesses in below because I want to fire some specific examples off for you guys. Well, so go ahead and put your businesses in below and I'll, give, I'll do a couple of specific examples of what should be happening in terms of the lead generation and then thinking about how that process is going to work. Then it's going to connect into a management system that you can visually see what's going on. You can see the leads that are coming in. You can see the sales that are being generated and see what's happening, right? You've got to see the process. Then you can start, people say to me, Aaron, how much did I spend? How much did you spend? How much do you, it depends on how much you make. What do you sell? What do you make, right? Depending on what you're selling will depend on how much your margin is. All of that depends on, or, on, on how much you should be spending, right? So you've got to reverse engineer your lead generation process. What have we got on so far, right? What have we got the first ones we've got? So cafe, a cafe, you should be, you could be driving huge amount of engagement online about coming and hanging out at a local cafe. You could even drive a, um, come and grab a coffee on us. You could be driving an offer, a coupon offer to be able to get a coffee plus get this. You could be dry, um, driving a, um, an engagement offer around lunchtime or if you're licensed to be able to, you know, come and grab lunch and get a free beer or whatever. You can play around with that a little bit, but they should be engagement of come and hang out with us. We've got the best coffee in town, the best sandwiches, whatever it may be. And they could be one-off offers, right? Where people can be able to get um, a discount on something or get a complimentary coffee if you're a newer cafe uh, or driving at a particular deal, like a lunchtime deal or something like that. They're the kind of things you could be driving as well. Hey, Lee Sharp, Monkey C, you got, oh, mate, I saw some of the things they're doing for you recently. You've got some great ads that are happening right now with Legendary Digital, and they're doing some great um, motion graphic ads for you now. So with Monkey C, I mean, people aren't scrolling going, oh, I want to buy a safety harness. So when they're scrolling and, and Facebook and Instagram are going to be the best bet for you, it's showing off how the, it's, it's showing off how many people are, are hurt from accidents. It's making sure that people are understanding that, that this is about safety for themselves and their family. Uh, that's a critical thing to be driving. So I'll be driving that as a, as a, a direct sale to your website, but you've got to check your website. You know, you might have the best marketing team around, which you do because your tech market, your marketing team do my marketing, but you've got to make sure where your website's converting. So you've got to have your website maximized and converting your end or else you drive a whole bunch of traffic and no one ends up buying it, right? So that's a critical part to it. Plastering, you want to be able to speak to people, right? You want to drive quotes. And if you're in plastering, Shelly, I'll tell you, most... Uh, most people that run a trades business, and I say most, are absolutely terrible at, at quoting, getting back to quoting and customer service. It is it is the biggest virus of that industry. So if you can just generate a process that generates a lead, get onto them straight away to be able to generate a quote, that's your process. Now, when it comes to uh, quoting for somebody, and I know that COVID is a screw this up a little bit, I'm not a fan of quoting people for what you do in plastering or building or anything like that around the home or office. I'm not a fan in quoting over the phone. I'm not a fan in quoting uh, via email. You should be able to go out there, quote in person, and then be able to deal with any objections there and then. So your job is to generate leads that you can speak to, follow the three, six rule. Car sales, you can't sell, well, you can sell a car online. It depends on what sort of level of car you're trying to sell. But if you're trying to, if you're selling a, 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 a new car, and they can, they're looking at a Toyota or a Mitsubishi or a, or a, um, or a, or a Lexus or a whatever. Your job is to generate some leads to get someone to be able to come in and have an appointment with you to be able to have a look at what your cars might be able to suit them. If not, you'll be driving an engagement campaign to get people to pay attention to you. Now, remember, when they're looking to buy a car from you, if they can, they are always going to shop around prices online. So if you keep somebody online for their whole experience in car sales, you end up becoming a statistic because all they're trying to do is they're trying to, to, to Okay, take the 
2000 and, you know, 10 Mitsubishi uh, Lancer. I'm going to go and search that on car sales and look for the private sales and just compare what you're doing with everybody else. So getting that person offline and engaging them quickly is a critical part to to this as well. I also think, don't think car yards do well enough uh, conjunctional deals. I think car yards should be driving a hell of a lot more conjunctional deals. I think if it was me doing it in a car yard, I'll be driving, you know, we've got a whole ton of cars, plus we can be your broker, we can source whatever car you want. I'd be driving that heavily to have them be, because you can source cars, you can broker deals, and you can make money just by clipping the ticket while you're still selling your used or your new cars as well. I think that's a big game that I'd be playing if I had a car yard as well. Hairdressing. Again, you can get people to do some kind of a deal like cafes to be able to get some kind of a treatment or a color or a cut or a trim or a consult, complimentary or a discount, and you're driving engagement at the same time. So I'll be doing that. But again, you can drive them to online. You could be saying, hey, we've got a lockdown special. Generally, we charge 150 for a cut color and whatever. I don't know the prices clearly, but you could do some kind of lockdown special to drive revenue in if you want to. You could be driving bookings or you could be driving uh, at home uh, uh, engagement like this to say, let's give you a home consult to see uh, what kind of hair color you could be using or treatment. And you could drive that complimentary. Imagine if the local hairdresser was doing complimentary 50 minute consultants on having a look at your hair and giving you tips and advice on different shampoos and conditioners you can be using for free. And then say, oh, by the way, while I've got you, can I book you in to come and have a trim when we open again? Of course you can be doing that, right? Think think outside the box. You guys, HLS Healthcare, you guys have got a great system and you've got a really, really, I love your system because you've got a really good lead generation process coming in. It's an expensive lead, but it's a qualified lead. That to me is a, a really good process. Follow the three, six rule that we've talked about. Uh, be managing that critically. And then we need to focus on some of the retargeting, which we've talked about as well. Health coaching, nutrition, oh my gosh, what a booming industry. Same as gyms for you guys as well. If you're trying to sell something online, you should be looking at the optimization of the website. I know that you and I, Mariana, we looked at our last mentoring call. I went through your website, didn't I? Because I'm like, that shit, that doesn't work, that doesn't work. Because you can drive all of the leads you want to your website. If your website is not ready to convert, it's going to cause you problems as well. Your website has to be ready to be able to convert, and it's got to be converting. So you could be doing a small ticket item. You could be doing, okay... Nutritional health coaching. We're going to be selling nineteen dollars to get a, um, you know, nineteen dollars to get a nineteen minute session um, on on how to be eating healthy in a lockdown and looking after yourself and your health and your body. That could convert into something else, or that could be complementary, or that could be more expensive. So you can be looking at a stepped sales process. That's called a step sales process, where you have something small or free that goes onto something bigger. That can work really well for you. For a gym, for you, Laura, uh, you know, we've had some huge successes in gyms right now. I know that um, I was looking at some of the stats um, for some of the gyms that we work with in um, a couple of my marketing businesses and they've been doing really, really well with a trial offer and then converting the trial offer into the paid membership and making a ton of money. So uh, I know that... um, that I know, for example, no FOMO up in um, up in um, Gold Coast, uh, one of our clients at Legendary, and uh, they were doing a trial offer that goes for maybe six weeks, and then it goes into a paid membership per week. And we worked out that it's worth about fifteen hundred dollars per year when they stay, and you know seventy percent of them staying. So it kind of really worked out to do the marketing, to do into the free trial, and then convert. You just have to weather that storm of the six weeks while they're coming in um, and basically using some of your stuff for free, but that's their offer. You've got to tweak it for you. So for any gym, yoga, Pilates studios, you've got to be looking at step sell offers to get people in the door and show them what you can do as well, right? I hope that helps. I hope that makes sense for you as well. Cool. What else we got? Could choose a couple more of you guys. Great. Um, I've done a few of you guys. Yeah, Sarah, yours with your with your you know boutique bums. That's gonna be really driving engagement, and then you and I are gonna be looking at um, uh, we're gonna be looking at memberships uh, is our next step. Driving engagement, memberships, and then we're gonna start looking at peripheral businesses. Um, think Empire Mastery, um, peripheral businesses uh, as well that we can start to bolt onto what you're already having a massive raving fan base. Um, osteopathic clinic, yeah, for you as well. I mean, one of the great things you can start to drive again is getting online consults, face-to-face consults, um, and a step sales process. As well, a lot of you health professionals out there, you're missing a trick when it comes to group stuff. You should be looking at retreats. You should be looking at online wellness retreats and events. You should be looking at um, you know face-to-face because once everyone can go back to hanging out again, there's going to be a flurry of people that are wanting to get back to face-to-face doing stuff, and health has become a big thing. Thing, a big thing for a lot of people as well. Um, uh, so I'll be looking at that. 
Um, NDIS providers, I work with a whole bunch of NDIS providers um, and disability and mental health. So it depends on what subsections of that you work, you focus on. But I'll be, I'll be focusing on a two-prong campaign on that. I'll be focusing on the, the carer role, so the people that are, um, are organising the care for the person and the actual person affected um, by, um, by it, whether it be the person has a disability or um, aged care or mental health. So I'll be focusing on the two ways. Because if you can engage somebody that, let's say if I was looking for something for a relative of mine that had a challenge that I was trying to, I was trying to help them with and they were, they were with you through the NDIS, if I was like, wow, that's the company I want to have a conversation with, that's a different marketing campaign to a direct to consumer if you will, like direct to the person that needs the help and the way we're marketing that. So I'll be looking at that uh, as well. Uh, and uh, not enough of pe- not enough people with NDIS actually know how to market properly, which is critical. Um, candle making, gifts, yeah, I mean, that's a no-brainer. Direct, direct, direct sale. I'll be making sure I've got very clear landing pages. One of the things many people do wrong within your industry where they're selling a whole bunch of different candles and gifts and stuff is they have, they, they, they have an offer from a website, uh, for, sorry, from Facebook, and they send them to a website full of tons of shit. I'm talking like 50 different things. Your offer should be about whatever that specific thing is about. Drive them to a specific landing page about that thing. Get them to buy that. Retarget them to come back to your website to see all of your other wares. I want to say it again. Drive them to buy one thing if you can. If you can, because this is what I find works really, really well. In the majority of cases, drive them to like, hey, buy this one thing. It's the miracle fucking candle. You burn it. You reduce your stress by 50%, whatever. And it has like a one page. They buy it. Then once they buy it, they go onto your database. You retarget those people through cookies, through emails, through their data. You retarget them to go back and say, by the way, you know how you want to reduce your stress? And you bought the candle? Well, we have 15 other stress-reducing things get over here and have a conversation with us. So that can work really well. If you use psychology, again, I'll be driving on and offline uh, conversations with people. Uh, I think that you really, I think that if you don't have enough business right now, uh, you're not marketing properly because that industry has had a huge boom in the last 12 months. Uh, in fact, you should be looking at your prices and looking at scaling um, Anna for you. Um, we're working with a few psychologists right now that are doing global brands. We're actually scaling globally, not just within Australia. And these are small operations that we're scaling. They're individual psychologists that we're scaling at the moment because this is the time. So I hope you're looking to Empire right now. Uh, Mia, I'm not going to give you any advice, Mia, because you're getting 200 leads a day from Legendary Digital. Here's my advice from you. Make some fucking phone calls and close some deals. Love you, Mia. Love you, Paul. Uh, what else we got? Uh, landscaping. Yeah, so for you, we, um, I would definitely be focusing for you, Tanya. I love that we're generating leads to go out there and quote. Um, and even that little tweak, that little tweak that we made together where you're going out and quoting and, and closing on the spot. I mean, I can't remember what you said to me, but maybe let me know in the comments. You, you're having your, your sales gone up by like 50% and your, your closing gone up by something ridiculous as well just by that tweak. So generating those leads, generating that quote, and then getting out to people and then following that process. And that's a great example for you, Tanya, of what I'm talking about. It's not just online lead generation. You've got to also meet that with business practices that are actually going to sell those and close those deals as well. Great one. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah, used cars is the same, mate. I'd be driving people to have conversations with you. Art gallery online. Uh, so art gallery is really an interesting one. I love, I love, I love art myself. Um, uh, and what I find with art galleries, here's what they don't do enough. They don't promote and have proper campaigns around selling me on uh, not just the paintings, but also on the the inspiration behind them and the artists. They're very good at saying, here's the painting, here's the painting, here's the painting, but not very good at selling the artist uh, and where the other works have been featured and what they've done. So I think you've got to have a really good retargeting campaign and content-driven campaign. Uh, as well as part of it. And also just some business advice around an art gallery. Try and make sure you work with as many artists as you can that um, only stock with you. Because if they stock with a lot of other people, it becomes really challenging because then you start to play the um, the price war game. Uh, spray tanning, again, I'd be getting people in on spray tanning. Uh, I would be getting them in on an offer that they can't refuse and offer you can't refuse. And then I'd be looking at some deals around memberships to get people to be able to stay in and coming back to you 
more often. Cybersecurity, you know, for you it's about are you exposed? Uh, let us do a quick 25 minute check just to make sure that you're not breaking any Australian laws and to make sure you're not exposed to hackers. It could cost you millions of dollars. I uh, will do a free 25 minute check uh, and you just have to, and, it's, it's a, and, it, and we can do it in 25 minute phone con- conversation, something like that for you guys, die. I'd be focusing on that plus all the other stuff that you do, I know that you're doing as well. Does it make sense for you guys? Is this helping? Is this helping you guys? Let me know. Love it. Love the engagement this morning, guys. Well done. Well, I think I've done my Q&A at the same time. <laughs> so my point that we take away from here, right? Reverse engineer your sales process from the end. Think about if it's on or off, it's offline in terms of your lead generation. So reverse engineer the whole, the whole sales process. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is think about the process once you generate your lead. What are you doing with that lead? Um, have some management and, and um, some visuals over top of those leads to see what's happening, how they're converting. Then if we step backwards through to that, make sure that the offers that you're creating are gonna be inducive to the business you wanna be able to create. Is it a step offer? Is it a small offer? Is it a larger offer? Is it a lead generation? Is it a sale? Is it an e-com offer? Like what's the process? What are you offering to be able to, to you know, I was talking to somebody the other day and they're a massage therapist. And they're like, oh, Aaron, we're shut down. We can't do anything and we're hard, it's hard to generate leads. I'm like, well, why can't you do an at-home massage video to teach people how to be able to massage their partner and sell online like a really cool $15 oil or something that comes along with a with a 30-minute how to massage your partner at home uh, with a beautiful oil that you can create. And you know her response was, yeah, but we're not going to be able to make a lot of money from that. I said, so that's not about that. If you can sell 100 of those to people that live in your geo-targeted area, guess who you're going to call when it opens up to book in a real massage? You've just generated a bunch of leads. And you've given something of quality of value, some nice massage oil, uh, a, a video on how to be able to massage your partner in lockdown. And um, you've got 100 leads you can call to book in to come and spend 80 bucks on a massage. It's smart business. You've got to think business before you think marketing. Strategies. You can't just think about marketing. Everything's connected. Does that make sense? Everything is connected. Make sense to you all? All right. Much love. Kicks and butt. I hope you've enjoyed this reverse engineering process around sales and leads. Uh, and remember, go and share this. I'm going to post this now onto my uh, Instagram. that will be posted across the other platforms later as we go. Um, go and share this. Go and share this. Go and share this uh, on your Insta. Go and share this to other people. Let's go and get other people watching this live. And let's make sure we're kicking butt and, um, and making the most of this opportunity that is now as well. All right, much love to you all. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you tomorrow morning for another Stand Together. Ciao.